Good evening, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital, and I want to answer some questions that have been asked of the Advanced Swing Systems workshop that's going to be taught this summer at uh, the Van Tharp Institute in Raleigh. Uh, the questions fell into these categories. Is swing trading still viable? Where do the ideas come from? How many systems will I teach? Do you have to monitor the markets during the day to trade the systems, or can you look at charts just in the evening or morning? How many setups, entries, and exits will you have to manage? How many are? Will the systems return? What's the SQNs look like? Is the e-learning swing course required? Why does the webpage say this is an intermediate level workshop? Uh, will attendees receive a subscription to Ken's Daily Reports? The last two are easy. Uh, it's an intermediate level workshop. I use the word intermediate to describe the time frame for swing trading. It's intermediate between monthly asset allocation and tactical day trading. So it, it referred to an intermediate level in terms of time frame. The concepts are advanced compared to the basics, which are in the e-learning swing course. Will attendees receive a subscription to the daily reports? Absolutely. Uh, the uh, questions then, starting from the top, is swing trading still viable? I believe so. Uh, this is a daily chart of the S&P 500, and the blue line represents the swing high, all-time high, really, of about 213. And this big drop here is around August 24th. And since August 24th of 2015 until the present, and today is uh, May 22nd, uh, the market has been down, but up, but down, up a little, down, up, starting to roll over. Remains to be seen if this 270 regression line is going to hold support and continue, or is it going to come down and test the swing lows of the last three uh, plunges? I don't know. Uh, the swing trades don't need to know. They would follow the rules. Uh, so in that time, we've gone really exactly nowhere, except for a lot of up and down and back and forth. Well, those are by definition swings. Uh, the past is no predictor of the future, so I can't tell you uh, what these systems must return in the future, but what I can tell you is that uh, we taught an online advanced swing system using the same uh, techniques that I'll teach in July in uh, Raleigh, and, uh, and it was a daily management using uh, end-of-day charts only and we were managing a portfolio of 30 potential targets at any given time. We had between 15 and 20 open positions. It took about 30 minutes uh, a day to manage those. Uh, those were, uh, we recorded those management sessions for that, that workshop. And uh, in this period of time from like end of February to, uh, uh, let's see, I wanna say the first, first of April, in that in that area, uh, it it returned uh, the following numbers, and so what I want to say is that these numbers uh, I, I can't project them forward, but when markets move like this, these are the kinds of results that should happen uh, when you apply these rules. And so uh, there were a total of at the time of the uh, uh, the ending of that report. Uh, and, and that, that uh, online workshop, we had uh, 54 uh, trades closed. Uh, there were a total of, um, you know, a dozen open positions. Um, the net R out of this period here was uh, 45, um, 45 trades, I'm sorry, 54 trades that returned 45 R and some change. There were still 33 trades open at that time. Uh, some of those were double positions, so um, it's, it wasn't 33 separate uh, uh, positions to manage. Uh, and there was about uh, a little over 19 are in open profits still in hand at, uh, going forward. Uh, on the closed trades, the biggest win was 3.5. The biggest loss was minus 1. The average win was 0.84. The standard deviation was 1.08. The, um, the square root of 54 
And so when you compute the, uh, the SQN using a multiple of 10, so normalizing it for 100 trades instead of 54, it would be 7.83. If you use the square root of n to multiply uh, to compute the uh, system quality number, it comes in at 5.75. There were 42 wins and 12 losses. That's a win rate of about 0.78. The average win was 1.29. The average loss was minus 0.73. Uh, in the open trades, um, uh, the biggest open position was plus three. The big, um, the uh, there was a minus one that had that was just getting ready to close. It was like minus 0.98. So we just uh, it was still open. We were going to close it the next day. Um, the average. Uh, was 0.59, the SD standard deviation was 0.14, the uh, N uh, square, uh, the square root of uh, N was 5.7, uh, so the system quality number was 6.3, the, if you take the N square root for the system quality number is 3.95, 21 winners, 21, or at 12 were in losing positions, the average win was 0.6, I'm sorry, win rate was 64%, Average win was 1.13. Uh, average loss, uh, the open loss was minus 0.34. That's not unusual um, uh, for uh, that to be smaller than on the closed trades. So the point, uh, I, uh, I can't uh, uh, predict what the future is going to look like, but when the market behaves like that and you apply the rules as we applied them, that's the kinds of results that can arise. Um, those re uh, patterns are symmetrical and so they work in down markets too so my expectation is that um, tr swing trades in this area uh, would be uh, effective as were swing trades in this period and they are starting to become effective on the short side here uh, as well so uh, I still believe swing trades are viable I think the uh, the net effect of uh, algorithmic trading and low uh, pain tolerances and an aging population that's skittish uh, and more active management opportunities and more ways to trade actively I expect volatility to still continue and I would not be surprised to see it expressed in the swing trade time frame so I believe adaptive swing trades are still uh, an effective and appropriate way uh, to engage in the market so the next question was where do these ideas come from and it's a it's a learning story really um, it starts with the uh, this uh, three categories of trading time frames. I use monthly asset allocation, approximately weekly swing trading, that's how long those trades last, and then intraday day trading. And I call the swing trade the intermediate time frame. It's intermediate between asset allocation on a monthly basis and day trading. And for a while, uh, kept those uh, separate and distinct. And so the swing trades, the basic swing systems that are taught in the e-learning course come from study of patterns and principles and lots of back testing, lots of forward testing, and then forward trading with lessons learned that resulted in six what I consider to be robust, systematic, mechanical swing systems. Through the process of trading them forward, we developed a continuation pattern which allowed us to continue to participate in swing trades that closed but then didn't fail further and, and started to resume their swing. And so we found a set of standard criteria that we could use to continue to engage with swing trades as they developed. And so out of those rules that allowed us to expand and continue, we developed a standard uh, continuation trade pattern. Through forward trading and uh, a lot of testing, uh, we typically develop a standard exit management uh, under certain exit conditions based on what the market and the sector look like. And so what has evolved in our swing trading is that we have a lot of different patterns and signals that get us into positions, and then that starts to focus on a standard way to continue to trade them, and then a standard way to exit them, so many ways to get in, one way to get out, or one set of ideas that are consistent when it comes time to manage. One of the things that happened through this forward testing is that as we started looking at our asset allocation and day trading 
programs, we realized there was a large overlap between the principles, patterns, concepts, approaches, and philosophies and psychology of day trading and asset allocation uh, were bleeding over into the swing trading and providing some valuable information. Strong targets for asset allocation turn out to be pretty good swing trade targets. Things that are performing well in a day trading day after day actually can grow into swing trading. So we saw, in addition, that some of the patterns we use for day trading and the relative strength ideas we use to asset allocation were ways of framing swing trades themselves. And so we started looking for ways to integrate the insights from the general process of trading into specific swing trade patterns. It allowed us essentially to refine a lot of the uh, and extend the systems that we teach in the basic course. And so these market conditions insights that come from asset allocation and the day trading patterns and insights that come from day trading take the form of applying techniques like relative strength, Bollinger Bands, regression lines, moving regression lines, frog boxes and frog system rules, day trading, uh, the generic standard process of framing a trade, the psychological tools we use to maintain our appropriate mental state, the idea of having a core and turbo position working together to offset risk, the idea that the markets are fractal in different time frames, so in other words, the same patterns repeat uh, regardless of time frame, all of those led us to develop another generation of swing trade strategies, which we call the, uh, which we bundled together called the Advanced Swing System uh, Trading Workshop. And so by adopting a systems thinking and strategic thinking approach and uh, really learning through time and looking at the trader as a student of the market uh, with, in the, with the intent of developing the ability to sense and respond and to apply continuous learning and continuous improvement and preserving the things that are working from the past, uh, sorting out and identifying the things that are working in the present and then anticipating things that might work in the future, we find the blend of those things allow us to put together these advanced swing system trade uh, trading workshops. So the specific question was how many systems? Uh, in a, uh, the uh, basic course, the e-learning course, has six systems plus continuation. Uh, we're going to add uh, seven different patterns that come out of the first generation of the regression line crossover framework. Those patterns have proven their worth in multiple time frames intraday and show their worth in the swing trade system. Now we've refined those seven patterns even further and come up with what we think of as the second generation RLCO patterns that take the basic pattern and get even more rigorous. It, it actually uh, is closer to a well-defined mechanical system than some of the artful judgment that's required for the patterns. So we'll teach those four patterns and we'll introduce you to the regression line fractal framework which is a general purpose way to uh, frame trades when, when a target has moved into uh, extreme conditions. Um, and uh, all of these patterns will work uh, whether you're looking at end of day charts only or whether you're looking at intraday time frames like 30 minute, 60 minute, two hour uh, charts uh, to make your decisions. We found that to be effective too. So uh, the number of entries really it can be as little as one and as many as 20 and it really depends on your span of control and the time frame you'd like to uh, spend on it daily and weekly um, and uh, and the size of the account. The SQN and the R multiples, I've given you some numbers on the previous chart. Um, uh, I'm satisfied that the patterns are, are good enough to trade um, and uh, but I'm, uh, I'd be foolish and uh, it'd be improper to, to guarantee that they'll perform it at that same rate going forward. Just markets do change. I have every reason to believe that the adaptive nature of these patterns will continue to keep them effective. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, the e-learning course, it's not mandatory that you take that prior, uh, although I would recommend it. Uh, I think those patterns uh, stand on their own. They form a, a, an excellent baseline for 
uh, traders uh, and you will find that you could trade them as is or you can apply some of these additional techniques to them. It could start off as a mechanical trade and then adopt some of these advanced patterns for management later or you could just uh, skip that and go right to the advanced patterns and work directly uh, with those. Either uh, of those uh, techniques can work and it really depends on your experience and the time that you have uh, available for learning. Uh, so how would I choose between the two if I was going to uh, characterize them? I would say the mechanical swing systems course uh, minimizes discretion because the systems can be robo-traded. In fact, we've got trade station um, uh, uh, strategies that, uh, that have robo-coded uh, uh, all of those patterns, including the continuation pattern, uh, so we, we know that it, they can be traded purely mechanically. Uh, they are uh, structured and well-defined systems, and because it's a home study course, you can learn at your own pace, including the ability to review. Uh, there's less knowledge and experience required precisely because they are so well defined. And the types of returns I would classify as structured and well defined because they measure a certain reward to risk and the exit rule says get out when it's time to get out. And so uh, you don't have the same um, uh, tendency to, to pile onto that trade using the advanced techniques, which takes more judgment and training, but it can be done. The Advanced uh, Adaptive Swing Systems course uh, allows you to apply more discretion. Uh, they define patterns, but there's flexibility in deciding what specific parameter you want to apply or how you might combine them, so there's more discretion potentially involved. Um, we've taken some of that discretion away with those second generation RLCO patterns because we thought it was important to have uh, more precision for uh, certain parts of the equity curve and the trading curve. Um, you, you'll find that the in-person course is uh, an intense three days of learning uh, or focused learning. Um, you, there's a network of live participants will be there and um, that synergy is always amazing uh, and surprising and good. Um, and so there's an opportunity to get dynamic and new insights that aren't contained already in the canned lectures of, this, of the uh, home study course. There's the possibility for a tailored learning environment because there's a lot of feedback that we do to prepare for the course and while we're conducting the course and in the follow-up that allows the, uh, the attendees to get uh, a tailored uh, learning environment for their particular needs. So it's more hands-on, I would say. Uh, there's more potential returns in the advanced systems because you can engineer the stops and exits more closely. There's a possibility of adding on to positions and leveraging um, uh, the longer term swing patterns intraday. Uh, your mileage may vary and so with volatility comes potential risk as well, but there is potentially more returns available in the uh, advanced systems. Um, the optimal approach naturally I would say is to blend uh, so that you get this combination of the rules based approach contained in the mechanical swing systems and the controlled uh, discretion that's available from learning the advanced adaptive uh, swing system courses. I should say uh, just a few words uh, about systems thinking and strategic thinking, uh, the other course that we're going to do this summer. This is a new one and the general purpose is to create and maintain an environment of continuous learning, adaptation and improvement in order to stay in sync with an adaptive market. And so we think of the, uh, the market and trading systems as a combination and as an intersection of systems, self, and market uh, with the idea being that we want to enlarge the sweet spot so that we are prepared to trade systems that suit us and that are well um, positioned to get an advantage from the market in its current state. And so by expanding uh, this area of overlap, uh, we increase our edge. Well, systems thinking is the way uh, I uh, approach doing that and the way I recommend doing it. And there's a relationship between systems thinking and strategic thinking in the following way. We normally think of strategic thinking as a desire to go from the current state out to some desired future state going from point A to point B and if that is our goal and our objective and our purpose then the strategy is the particular approach that you use to get from A to B 
recognizing that there are many other ways it could go and other places you could end up that you don't necessarily want to go. So uh, a strategy is a, uh, is a way to define an approach that we think improves the probability and reduces the time that it takes to get from A to B. Another way to look at strategies uh, are a way to link ends, ways, and means, with ends being the purposes and goals that you desire to achieve, or in this case, B. Um, the methods, the, the approach that gets you there, and then the means, which are the resources that make this a realistic uh, uh, approach. A systems approach to that considers these processes of applying methods and, and making progress in the approach as a, uh, as a process of taking inputs, processing them, and making an output with feedback loops to improve our performance, conducted inside an environment that affects us but which is beyond our direct control. So when we take a systems approach from input process output, we also recognize that it's conducted inside an environment that has other actors and other systems at work. So the systems thinking that allows us to enlarge the sweet spot, to improve our processes, to come up with strategic plans that improve our ability to go from point A to point B, turn out to be habits of mind and ways of thinking and perceiving and acting turns out to be disciplined, systematic, takes a multiple perspective view of reality and the, uh, and the program we're engaged in. It's adaptive and dynamic because the world is adaptive and dynamic, and so we have to mirror that. It uses learning in order to improve, so it is sense and respond, and it looks at those feedback loops uh, as ways to improve and tune and adjust our systems uh, to stay in, in sync with the broader market. It's self-organizing in that there are processes on board that allow us to make those incremental or even strategic changes to stay aligned. Uh, it's open to change both from the internal reconfiguration and from external changes in the environment or in our goals uh, so that we can adjust our processes uh, to reflect the new reality. It turns out to be a way of thinking and acting that features a lot of these kinds of skills and knowledge uh, that we put into standard practice. So part of the workshop is to not only to learn how to do the top-down view of the world and the markets and, and designing different approaches and uh, doing process improvement, but also learning practical tools, uh, how to form habits that are useful, um, uh, reliable processes, uh, acquiring resources, how to synchronize, how to use the power of networks, and the reality of networks in order to improve our probabilities of success. So all of these uh, typical approaches are the kinds of things that allowed us to go from a set of specific, well-defined, isolated systems here into integrated, advanced swing systems that blended the best ideas of asset allocation, day trading, and swing trading uh, in a learning process. It takes systems thinking to make this kind of change. I should say that you don't have to be a systems thinker to be able to apply the techniques that we're going to teach in the advanced swing system. Um, but uh, these habits of mind from the systems thinking, strategic thinking workshop allow you to do that kind of on your own or even participate as a member of the learning community. So that's what I wanted to say about the two workshops coming up this summer. Um, uh, thanks for your kind attention. And uh, if you get other questions, please uh, forward them over to the gang at uh, the Van Tharp Institute, and we'll uh, keep trying to answer them as they come up. So thanks very much. Keep your risk measured and your powder dry. Take good care of yourselves.